now time for member statements. Member for Spadina, Fort York. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, three years ago, I moved into a condo on the waterfront in Toronto, and one of the questions I had when I moved in there was, would there be a sense of community? And the answer has been absolutely. There are more neighbourhood associations in my riding than any other place that I've ever lived, and they are incredibly active. They're, it's the fastest growing part of the country the, that rides Spadina, Fort York. And a lot of the direction for the development is, is being uh, given from the, the neighborhood associations because they want parks, they want schools, they want daycares, they want all the amenities that go with a proper community. And this Thursday on, th on Halloween, it's, it's no exception. They have, there are neighborhood associations that have organized incredible Halloween events. City Place Organization, uh, City Place Neighborhood Association, it's a partnership between the businesses and the local and the uh, the condos and they've got 60 locations for kids to go and pick up candy they've got a corn maze in the park they've got all kinds of events uh, Liberty Village also has a, a, a distribution points or points for uh, for the Halloween uh, candies and the most important thing about these Halloween celebrations in these in these neighborhoods is not just that kids get their loot bags full and they will get them very full but it's also that it builds a place in downtown Toronto for families to raise children and for children to feel welcome and to have all of the celebrations that you'd have in other parts of the province. So thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for letting me talk about this. Thank you, Member Statements. The Member for Willowdale. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, as I'm sure members of this House will remember, in April of 2018, my community of Willowdale suffered an immense tragedy. In the weeks following the Young Street van attack, our community came together to support one another and prove that kindness, love, and community can stamp out hate and division. Today, I'd like to share, Mr. Speaker, that more light is coming from this darkest of events. Anne-Marie D'Amico was one of the victims that day, an inspiring young woman with a passion for helping others. In remembrance of her spirit, her family has created the Anne-Marie D'Amico Foundation to raise funds for causes that embody Anne-Marie's spirit and her desire to effect positive change. On Tuesday, December 3rd, Anne-Marie's birthday, the Foundation will be holding their inaugural fundraising event, the Turtle Project at the Meridian Arts Centre in Willowdale. This evening of dance, live music and magic will raise funds towards a revolutionary new facility for the North York Women's Shelter as part of the Foundation's mission to end violence and abuse against women. Mr. Speaker, I have gotten to know the D'Amico family over the last year and have been inspired by Anne-Marie's story and the incredible work that her family has done to honour her memory and her legacy. I would like to encourage all members of this House and all Ontarians to join me in attending the Turtle Project and supporting the Anne-Marie D'Amico Foundation. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. Yesterday, we learned that Ford Motor Company's Oakville plant will be cutting 450 jobs. That's 450 families who are now worrying about their future. When I heard this news yesterday, I felt gutted for these workers and families, and now I'm angry. I'm angry because Ford's Oakville plant already lost 200 jobs in September. Chrysler's third shift in Windsor is still in jeopardy, and GM Oshawa is ending their vehicle production. At NEMAC in Windsor, the employer has tried to break their contract with workers at that plant, cutting 270 direct jobs. When the workers took over the plant in protest, myself and many of my NDP colleagues were on the line with them. I'm outraged because my NDP colleagues and I have repeatedly implored the government, both Liberal and now Conservative, to create an auto and manufacturing strategy. We must protect and grow the industry and ensure that government investments are made with ironclad commitments to keep jobs here. But for the past year, the Premier has done nothing but sit back and watch tens of thousands of jobs that have left Ontario. For every one direct job lost, we lose as many as eight indirect jobs. That could mean over 5,000 losses because of job cuts at Ford's Oakville plant alone. Corporations have moved production to Mexico, where they can pay workers next to nothing. And, in some cases, they only allow men to apply. 
I'm asking the Premier today, when will enough finally be enough? How many highly skilled, hardworking people have to lose their jobs before he takes action? Speaker, for the sake of our friends, families and communities, let today be the first day that the Premier and this government finally get to work on Ontario's auto strategy. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Eglinton Lawrence. Speaker, thank you very much. I think I'm on the same page as my colleague from Trinity Spadina. Um, we, um, we also this past weekend had a uh, pumpkin giveaway in the Fairbank Village area, a business improvement area in my riding. And so I participated in that as I do every year. And it's certainly a sure sign that Halloween is on the way in our riding and uh, of course across Ontario. So speaker, it is getting dark earlier in the evening. Halloween is quickly approaching. And I know that the children in my riding of Eglinton Lawrence and across Ontario are counting down the days and hours until they can put on their costumes and go trick or treating on Thursday evening. Uh, it's really a time full of excitement, but I want to encourage everyone to put safety first this Halloween. So please, everyone, drive with caution on Halloween night. Be on the lookout for trick-or-treaters, both in the afternoon and in the evening. A and if you're out enjoying the evening, carry a flashlight with you or choose a costume uh, which will allow you to be visible and to see yourself, and avoid wearing long or oversized <laughs> kinds of costumes, which could be a tripping hazard. And please walk, not run. Always stop, look, and listen before crossing the street, and never jaywalk uh, and only use crosswalks or intersections. And I, I also want to say never tr trick or treat alone. You should always go in a group with an adult, stay in familiar areas, and only go to homes that are well lit and that are taking part in Halloween. And of course, never go inside a house, as my little son did, to get your treat uh, when the door opens. He was a little confused. Um, and parents, last but not least, don't forget to check the Halloween candy that your children bring home and make sure that uh, they have both a happy and memorable night. So I wish everybody participating a very happy and or very spooky Halloween. Thank you. Thank you. The member for Ottawa Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I rise today to acknowledge serious errors I made on May 28, 2019, as I spoke about Miles Kulperger, an 11-year-old child who died by suicide in 2018. I read about Miles online but misconstrued important details. I stated that he had died in 2014 and that he was dyslexic. Neither of these claims were accurate. To make matters worse, I did not approach the parents to request permission to cite the story in the Ontario Legislature. I take full responsibility for these mistakes, and working with the family, I intend to move a unanimous consent motion in a moment to expunge mention of Miles Kulperker from Hansard on May 28, 2019. His family has requested this course of action, and there are two reasons why I hope it will pass. First, the Kulperker family name is unique, so internet searches of Miles currently produce a link to my comments in Hansard. Understandably, his family does not want false information circulating about their loved one. Secondly, as I mentioned earlier, a legacy charity has been formed called Miles Ahead, advancing child and youth mental health, and significant effort is now being put into building something positive and meaningful out of this tragedy. It is deeply troubling to those engaged in this important work to have my erroneous comments readily available. With all this in mind, Speaker, to make amends for my actions and respect the wishes of the Kulperger family, I will now seek unanimous consent to expunge any mention of Miles Kulperger from the electronic version of Hansard for May 28, 2019, as well as any future printed editions of that answer. That motion, Speaker. Yes. Member for Ottawa Centre is seeking unanimous consent of the House to expunge any mention of Miles Culberger from the electronic version of Hansard for May 28, 2019, as well as any future printed editions of that Hansard. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. I'm going to take that down to the table. Okay. 
Are you, are you finished? I'm finished. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Thunder Bay, Superior North. Speaker. Speaker, we know that guns, gangs, and drugs are significant issues in major urban centres such as Toronto. And in fact, that has been recognized with significant funding support from the province. But what is perhaps not as well known by this government is that those issues have spread to northern communities like Thunder Bay, where gangs from southern Ontario have infiltrated the community, putting an enormous strain on the Thunder Bay Police Service. And unfortunately, putting Thunder Bay near the top with respect to murders per capita in Canada. Now, when the federal government allocated $65 million to the province to deal with those challenges, those of us in the North were shocked that none of that financial assistance came our way, despite the strong case that was made by Mayor Bill Morrow and Police Chief Sylvie Hoff. Speaker, let me add to that case just a bit. First of all, the creation of a major case unit is a real priority as the police service remains understaffed in properly responding to the high volume of violent crimes in our city. We continue to be ranked by Statistics Canada as second in the country for violent crimes. We had, in fact, over 1,600 in 2017, and we are ranked first in homicides. The time has clearly come for the province to financially support the Thunder Bay Police Service so that they can effectively deal with guns, gangs, drugs, and human trafficking issues in our community. Thank you, Speaker. Yes, thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Milton. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize my friend and a former colleague, one of the hardest working individuals I know, the Honourable Lisa Raid. Lisa served as a member of parliament for Milton for over a decade, Mr. Speaker, and served in cabinet as part of the federal conservative government. In her various roles as a minister of natural resources, labor and transport, Ms. Raid continued to skillfully serve the citizens of Milton and Halton. While Ms. Raid was in government, she single-handedly brought funding to Milton in order to build the velodrome, the sports center, the tennis center, and the Milton Arts Center. The result in last Monday's federal election saw an election of a new MP for Milton. I know I speak for all Miltonians, all of my constituents, in thanking Lisa for her service to our community. Lisa, it was a pleasure to work with you as an MP and then as an MPP in Milton, and I want to personally thank you for all you have done to make Milton a better place to live, work, and play. And I would like to wish Lisa all the very best in all of her future endeavors, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for the effort. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for York Southwestern. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I wish to offer a warm welcome to you and all members of the provincial member provincial uh, parliament, mem member provincial parliament, as we resume the legislative session. We are returning to this place at a later date than usual, but I am pleased that there is still time to remind the House and members of the public that October is Islamic Heritage Month. Over the last few weeks, I have enjoyed the opportunity to share this rich heritage with all our neighbors. Ontario has welcomed immigrants practicing their Islamic faith from earliest days of confederation because of our history and the journey we made have made our roots are deep in this land. Some of us are recently arrived and are still adjusting to new life and home. Others this month will celebrate many years and multiple family generations as a Canadian citizens. In October, Muslims share their heritage with the entire community. Across the province, you can find Islamic heritage on display and celebrated in cultural exhibitions, from film screenings, open houses and speeches and seminars. Muslim community groups open their doors and send a message of peace, love, respect and tolerance. I invite all Ontarians to share in this rich cultural tradition. I'm so proud to call Ontario my home and proud to join my fellow Muslims to celebrate Islamic Heritage Month. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member statements.
It's now time for reports by committees.